A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. When Moshe dedicated the Mishkan, the celebration lasted seven days. So too with King Solomon and the dedication of the first temple. Why at the time of the rededication of the temple by the Choshmonaim did they celebrate for eight days? In order to understand this matter properly, we first need to uh, preface what we are about to say with the following comments. There are really two kinds of Hanukkah. In other words, there are two ways of understanding and appreciating what uh, Hanukkah is all about. Uh, there is the attitude and the understanding, the perception of Hanukkah as it has uh, existed in the minds of most Jews for the last 2,000 odd years, which is a heavily uh, Galuth, exile-induced uh, perception, in which case Hanukkah really is all about one thing and one thing only, and that is the fact that a certain amount of oil that was supposed to last one day lasted uh, eight days. And therefore, this was a miraculous event, and therefore we celebrate this miracle by uh, this festival known as Hanukkah. That perception and understanding of what Hanukkah is all about is without a doubt misguided and incorrect. And it is a heavily uh, exile-induced uh, perception of what Hanukkah is all about. And it is a direct result of the fear uh, of the people and the Chachamim, the sages, 2,000 years ago, 1,800 years ago, um, in the wake of the tremendous calamities that befell the Jewish people uh, as a result of failed revolts against the Romans in Eretz Yisrael at that time, referring to the, the Great Revolt which led to the destruction of the Temple, and we refer here to the uh, revolt of Bar Kokhva uh, some 60 uh, odd years later against the Romans. These events led to tremendous suffering and destruction and almost the annihilation, in fact, of the uh, Jewish presence in Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, uh, any reference to uh, Jewish prowess in military matters, any discussion of uh, fighting and uh, uh, opposing the enemy in any way other than by prayer, uh, became taboo. And uh, therefore, Hanukkah was a very, a very problematic uh, celebration, a very difficult time to explain to the people if you wish to maintain a very low profile, and you don't want to speak about what really happened at that time, then you have to come up with some other focus for this, for this festival of Hanukkah. And that focus became the Nes Pach Hashem, and the miracle of the oil. And that is something that the, uh, the Jewish Galut-based view can appreciate and, and uh, see as something of major importance, even though it is obvious that for such a reason we would never introduce uh, such a festival. As Maharal himself, Maharal of Prague, writes explicitly in his uh, work on Hanukkah called Ner Miswa, he writes that for that reason alone we would never have instituted a festival called Hanukkah. We also know that uh, uh, it is certainly within the power of Hashem to uh, cause uh, oil that is to light for one day to light for more than one day, just as we find in the Gemara and another place uh, a certain Chacham, who was very poor, and his daughter said to him, Erev Shabbat, we haven't got oil to light candles for Shabbat. He said, he who said to oil, he who commanded the oil that it should light, will also command, they had a little bit of vinegar in the house, he said, he will also command the vinegar that it should light as well. Hashem can do that, and Hashem can cause the oil to last a bit longer. This is really uh, no, no great news at all to anyone who understands that Hashem created the universe from nothing. This all, this, all of this is a, uh, a mis, misinterpretation and, and, a, and a tremendously tragic uh, misunderstanding of Hanukkah, but it was something that was felt to be necessary as a result of the pressures and the circumstances that we described. 
However, the truth of the matter is that Hanukkah is not about that, it is about something else altogether. If we look at the uh, Nusah that we say, the additional prayer that we say in our Tefilot, in Bikat HaMazon, uh, during Hanukkah Ananisim, for example, there we find absolutely no mention of anything to do with the oil. There we find explicit mention only of the Nisim, the Gevuroth, the Milhamoth, and the Peduth, that is to say the military victory and the uh, celebration of, of Jewish um, courage and uh, prowess on the battlefield and the staunch and stubborn opposition of our forefathers to the foreign conqueror who on top of everything else wanted to eradicate uh, the Torah in our way of life. Uh, none, none of these sources mention anything to do with the oil, so we see that this is not the main uh, part of the festival at all. And as for your question, this very same question was asked already many, many centuries ago in what's called the Scholion, which is a, uh, an additional text which is uh, essentially nowadays considered part of a very ancient text called Murilat Ta'anith, which is one of the earliest works of Tarsha Baal Peh that we have, going back to the time of the Second Temple. And there, the question is asked as follows. <laughs> For what reason was this Hanukkah that we celebrate every year set to be celebrated for eight days? <laughs> the uh, dedication of the Mishkan, the original tabernacle, at the time of Moshe Rabbeinu was only that was only done for seven days. And the same is true, as we know, of Shlomo, as was, as was mentioned. Shlomo HaMelech dedicated the first temple, as is described at length in Sefer Melachim, in the Book of Kings, and there also it was done for seven days. And here we see a celebration that, la that lasted eight days. At the time of the uh, Greco-Syrians, the Jewish uh, rebel force led by the Hashmonaim entered the Mikdash, Uvanuet HaMizbeah, and they rebuilt the Mizbeah because it had been profaned by use as a Mizbeah, as an altar for Abu Dazara, for idol worship. Usaduhu Besid, and they painted it with the Kanubo Kalet Sharet, and they uh, um, produced new uh, pure vessels. And they were involved in this process for eight days. And that is why we celebrate for eight days. So says Mirilath Ta'anith, one of the earlier sources that we have that discusses this matter. This is one uh, reason that we find in ancient sources, but there's actually an, uh, an even more ancient source, which apparently is the more authentic and uh, historically accurate explanation of why we celebrate Hanukkah for eight days. And this, of course, uh, as you will immediately understand, obviates all the uh, convoluted explanations given by some of the Mepharshim, some of the commentators, why we celebrate for eight days, because the fact is that this is mentioned explicitly in Sefer Hashmona Imbeth. We have historical works from that time, or shortly after that time, of the events of Hanukkah, that is to say, going back uh, nearly 2,200 years, and there it says as follows, in Sefer Hashmonaim, uh, the second book of Hashmonaim, uh, in the first chapter, it says, وَيَهَوْغُ أَشْمُنَاثْ هَيَمِيمْ بَسِمْهَا كَهَاغْ هَسُكُوثْ They celebrated, this is referring to the Jews who were able, after a few years of guerrilla warfare, and uh, revolt against the Greco-Syrians, they were successful in driving out the foreign occupying force from Yerushalayim and re-entering the temple. And then they celebrated in the temple, which they rededicated for eight days, Kehag HaSukkot, as Chag HaSukkot is celebrated for eight days. Bezuchram et ra'otham lifnei zman ma b'chag HaSukkot, when they remembered how, in what a terrible state they had found themselves only a short while before, in the month of Tishrei, only two months before, uh, at the time of Sukkoth, Beharim of Ma'aroth Kehayot Hasadeh. This refers to the fact, as is described there at great length, in uh, both in, in Sefer Hashmonaim and also in the writings of Yosef mm -hmm. ben Matityahu, uh, Yos, uh, Josephus Flavius, there we find that the Jews uh, celebrated the first Hanukkah when they rededicated the Mikdash, the temple, 
They did so with lulavim and arbath aminim, as we do on Sukkoth. They took uh, lulavim and etherokmim, etc. And they uh, circled the Mizbeach with the arbath aminim, as we do on Sukkoth in the temple. And they celebrated for eight days because they viewed this celebration that they were now able to perform in the Mikdash, in Yerushalayim, in the month of Kislev, at the end of Kislev. They, on the 25th of Kislev, they were able now to finally make up for the fact that they had not been able to celebrate Sukkoth properly because two months before they had been unable to celebrate Sukkoth because they were literally living like wild beasts in the fields and, and living and hiding in caves as, as they were still involved in the warfare, the guerrilla warfare against the Greco-Syrian army, etc. And they were living off the land, they had very little food, they were living in very difficult, harsh conditions. It was impossible in such a situation to celebrate Sukkoth. You have obviously no time to build a sukkah, you can't live in a sukkah, because then you will just attract attention and you'll be easily found by the enemy and destroyed. They had uh, no time, of course, to look for Abath HaMinim, the four species. All of these things were quite, were quite, were quite impossible. They felt very bad about the fact that they had not been able to celebrate Sukkoth properly, which is the central and most joyous uh, celebration of the year. Uh, and therefore, when they returned to Yerushalayim after several years of combat and living in such a state, they now saw this celebration of rededicating the temple as a tashlumim, as a making up for the fact that they had not celebrated Sukkot properly, even though they had no choice in the matter, of course, but nevertheless they were not happy about this, and they saw this as a tashlumim, as making up for that lack of celebration of Sukkot. And therefore they celebrated with the Abath HaMinim, even though it was not Sukkot, and they uh, made the celebration last for eight days, again, because of the connection uh, to Sukkot, seeing the celebration as a substitute for Sukkot. This is the true and authentic historical reason uh, why Hanukkah lasts for eight days. And based on this information, we can then go on to understand something else uh, which has baffled many of the commentators. We find in the Tamud Bavli, in Masechet Shabbat, Daf Kaf Aleph, as well as in Mechilat Ta'anith, we find the discussion between Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel regarding uh, how we go about lighting the candles, assuming that we wish to light more than one candle per day, which is the uh, basic requirement. If we wish to be Mahadrin and go beyond that, then we light, uh, according to Beth Hillel, we light one candle on the first day and two candles on the second day, etc., until the eighth day when we light eight candles. And according to Beth Shammai, we do the opposite. We begin with eight candles, and every day we... Uh, less than the number of candles by one, so the second day seven, etc., until the last day one candle. This is what we find in the Talmud Bavli. It states, Beth Shammai Omarim, Yom Rishon Madlik Shemona, the first day you light eight candles, Mikan Wa'elach, Poheth Wa'olech, and then from every day onwards you go down in number by one. Uveth Hilel Omarim, Yom Rishon Madlik Echad, the first day you light one candle, Mikan Wa'elach, Mosif Wa'olech, and every day after that you add one more. The Talmud goes on to state, Shnei Zekenim Hayu Basidon. There were two Chachamim in the city of Sidon, in Sidon, which is in present-day Lebanon, Lebanon, but is definitely part of Eretz Yisrael. Had Asa Kedivrei Beth Shammai, Had Kedivrei Beth Hillel. One uh, had the custom uh, of lighting candles according to Beth Shammai, and the other according to Beth Hillel. Zenothen Ta'am Lidvara, or Zenothen Ta'am Lidvara, and each could explain for what reason they acted as they did. The Chacham who acted in accordance with the view of Beth Hillel said, the reason I light one candle the first day and two candles the second day is because we have a, a rule of thumb which is Ma'alim Bakodesh. We always go up uh, from stage to stage, from moment to moment. We go up in, in holiness. We increase. We do, not de we do not decrease. And the Chacham whose custom it was to uh, light according to Beth Shammai he said, I light eight the first day and seven the second day, etc., because I am acting in a manner similar to what we find in the Torah with regards to the Korban Musaf of Haga Sukkoth. What we find in the Torah regarding the uh, Korban Musaf, the special sacrifice for uh, Sukkoth, is as follows. We find in the Sefer Bamidbar, Perek Kaf Teth, Pesukim Yud Beth onwards, 29-12 onwards, we find that on the first day of Sukkoth, the special 
Korban consists of, amongst other things, 13 parim, young bullocks. And the second day, he goes on to say in, in verse 17, instead of parim b'nei vakar shalosha asa, now it is parim b'nei vakar shanem asa, the 12 bullocks, and the next day 11, and so on, till the last day is 7. If you add up 13 and 12, etc., down to 7, you end up with 70 altogether. So there are 70 parim uh, that are sacrificed during the seven days of Sukkot. We see, therefore, that the first day has the largest number, and the second day uh, one less, and the third day one less again, etc. So the Chacham, who acted in accordance with the view of Beth Shammai, said, I light my Hanukkah candles in a manner similar to that which is done in the Mikdash with regards to Korban Musaf, on Sukkoth. We begin with a high number and we go down every day. The obvious question, however, is what possible connection can one find between uh, lighting Hanukkah candles and Korban Musaf of Sukkoth? There is obviously no connection at all. And this question has been asked by many of the Mepharshim. The simple answer, and the obvious answer, when we know that which we know, having read Sefer Hashmonaim, which I should point out was not known uh, in any Jewish circles until uh, very recently, until the last couple of generations, was not known for nearly 2,000 years, and therefore the Mepharshim, the commentators, could not possibly have related to this information. What we now know that Hanukkah was instituted as a kind of tashlumim, as a kind of substitute, to make up for the eight days of Sukkoth, therefore there is a connection and a certain similarity between Hanukkah and Sukkoth, and therefore it is not astounding that Beth Shammai would say, if there is already this connection between Sukkoth and Hanukkah, then when it comes to the number of candles in which order we do these things, and let us take our uh, example uh, from uh, Sukkoth, where we begin with uh, 13 parim, and then we go down to 12, etc. In the same way, let's begin with 8 and work down next day 7 candles and work our way down to 1 candle on the last day. This is the reason that one can make some legitimate connection between these two totally disparate things. When we understand the historical realities and the uh, true uh, chain of events and the way these things were understood and lived by the people of that time, many of the uh, different aspects and uh, details of Hanukkah are uh, illuminated in a new and uh, very meaningful and interesting light. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, Please email us at office at machonchilo.org.